today we're looking at the top 10 most valuable Marvel comics of the year 1986. These are the most historic books. These are the ones everybody wants, and they've all been key issues for a long time. Let's jump into the list. Number 10 of the year is Uncanny X-Men 201. It's the first appearance of Baby Nathan, who would turn out to be Cable. It's also the 95th most valuable Marvel comic of the entire decade of the 1980s. And Storm becomes team leader of the X-Men in this issue. Print run estimated at 417,000 copies. X-Men was a massive hit for Marvel in the mid 80s. We can see that CGC is now graded over 1,500 copies in all grades combined. There are 904 9.6s or better. Heritage Auctions has only sold 18 copies, however, in the last 21 years. Here's the three different covers. We have the direct edition with the Spider-Man face. We have the newsstand edition with barcode. And we have the Canadian edition with a higher cover price of 75 cents. Using the Overstreet Annual Price Guide for the last few years, we can see that in all grades raw, this book has been stalled for the last half decade. And what you want to do, though, if you want to see what the super high grade slab copies are doing, you need to look at eBay auctions and see the ended sold items. And also check out gpanalysis.com to uh, have full record of all the record breaking sales for the higher grade CGC copies. On the CGC census, we see there's 483 9.8s, and there is a Canadian price variant. Only 22 have been graded. There is one single 9.8 copy. The number nine comic of the year is Masters of the Universe number one, based on the TV cartoon series. It ranks as 118th most valuable Marvel comic of the 80s. And what's interesting about this, this is the very first time Marvel Comics has released a Master of the Universe comic. DC had the license for the last five years, but this is the first Marvel one. Print run estimated 192,000 copies. This series was published under Marvel's new children's Star Comics line, and it would last for 13 issues this series. Almost a thousand copies graded in total by CGC, including 659 9.6s or better. Heritage has sold 40. Overstreet in the last few years has been stalled in lower grades, but higher grades raw have been moving up uh, in the past year. Definitely demand is growing. There are 377 9.8s and nine of the Canadian price variants have got that grade. Number eight of the year. Ewoks number 10. This is a Star Wars uh, based series. And of course, Ewoks had a cartoon series at this time. This title was also published under the Star Comics uh, toy line. And again, why? Some of these are really rare. Print run estimated of this book is only 22,000 copies. And why is this a key issue? Because it's part of a storyline that tied in with droids number four. So C-3PO and R2-D2 make appearances in this issue. And this was also part of Marvel's 25th anniversary. You can see all the uh, Marvel classic characters on the cover. Uh, it's the 114th most valuable Marvel comic of the 80s. And look at this. This is what's most interesting about this book. CGC is only graded 34 copies 20 of them 9.6s, and Heritage Auctions has only sold one copy. So this book is uh, rare, which is why it has a higher price tag. And it had a big jump just this year alone in high grades. Still generally affordable if you can find copies, but on eBay right now, it's really rare. Very few copies listed. 13 9.8s and 7 9.6s. That's all there is on the census. That's very little. Number seven of the year, Marvel Comics Super Special number 40. This is a magazine size format comic, ranked 77th of the entire decade. And this one's interesting because it is the movie adaptation of the movie Labyrinth, starring David Bowie and the movie made by Jim Henson. The movie itself is not a success, and the print run of this was quite low. Print run estimated at only 24,000 copies in 1986. This magazine would be broken down into a regular comic size format in a three issue mini series. There are only 20 copies on the CGC census total with nine 9.6s or better. And again, Heritage has only sold one of these. A little bump in all grades in the newest Overstreet Price Guide. 
And on the census, three 9.8s and six 9.6s. That is it. So these the last two made the list simply due to rarity and being very cool items. Number six on the list, though, is a highly collected book. It's been a key issue for a long time. Captain America Annual Number 8, ranked 79th of the decade. Why is this book so popular? It features a Wolverine cover story of him battling Captain America. Mike set cover and art. Print run estimated at 194,000 copies. Over 1,300 copies have been graded by CGC, including 628 9.6s or higher. Heritage has sold 26. <clears throat> Again, in Overstreet, the book had a little bump in all grades this year in the newest guide. There are two 9.9s of this book and 263 9.8s. Next on our list, ranking high, is Marvel Age number 41. It's in fifth place, and it features a classic Stan Lee cover. And you might remember back then, you would learn your news about what was coming out from Marvel by purchasing this magazine every month in comic book format. It had a cheaper 50 cent cover price when comics were regularly 65. Print run estimated at 91,000 copies of this issue. It features all of Stanley's great creations. And it also features Millie the Model in the bottom left corner, which I think is pretty cool. And CGC has actually graded a decent number of these, 451 copies. There are 244 9.6s or better. Heritage has only sold four copies. The book has been stalled in all grades raw for the last few years. There are 131 9.8s. Next on our list, number four of the year, New Mutants Annual Number 2, the first appearance of Psylocke in a U.S. publication. So let's learn a little bit more about this one. Psylocke had originally appeared in Captain Britain 10 years earlier in the UK, but finally gets a, a first US appearance in this issue. Print run estimated at 280,000 copies. Alan Davis cover and art on this book. Over 1,500 copies graded by CGC. 522 9.6s or better. Heritage has now sold 25 copies. Using the Overstreet Annual Price Guide, we can see it had a little bump in low grades this year, but it's been slowly moving up year by year in higher grades. There's 185 9.8s of this book. Number three of the year. This is a major iconic book. It's been a key book since pretty well it came out. Punisher number one. This is the original Punisher miniseries. 12 years after debuting in Amazing Spider-Man 129, he finally gets his own series. And this was a hefty, thicker book, $1.25 cover price. And print run estimated at 220,000 copies. This book was so popular that the print run actually went up each issue. So number four and five. And that's something else that's interesting. It was advertised as a four-issue miniseries. It was so popular, they stretched it into five issues. It's the 27th most valuable Marvel comic of the 80s. And you can see in the last few years, it's had huge gains at CGC, over 2,300 copies graded, including over 1,000 9.6s or better. And Heritage has sold 21 copies. Over straight, uh, lower grades have been completely stalled for a few years, but higher grades are just slowly sticking up year by year. And on the census, there are 379.8s. And there is only one 9.8 of the Canadian price variant. The number two book of the year uh, didn't catch on until a decade after it came out, but it's been a key book ever since. Star Wars 107 ranks 23rd of the entire decade. Why this book? It's not really a key issue, but it is the last issue of the original Marvel series, which ran for nine years and it had the smallest print run by far. Print run estimated could be as low as 70,000 copies. There is a CGC 9.9, .9, and this would be the last Marvel Star Wars comic published for 29 years until finally the big relaunch in 2015. On the CGC census, there is now almost 1,400 copies graded, including 369 9.6s or better. Heritage has sold quite a few at 48. I remember back in the late 90s, this book was in the dollar bins. I bought, I used to go around store by store and I'd buy up all the dollar copies of this book. 
In Over Street, you can see it really hasn't had any movement in the last decade in lower grades. High grade, it stalled for a long time, but just this year it had a little bump again. And on the census, there is the 9.9, .9, and then there's 110 9.8s. And then recently, there is a reprint, the True Believers reprint. Five copies have been graded, and that came out just in 2019. And the number one most important and valuable Marvel comic of 1986 ranks 20th of the decade, in fact. It's been stalled for a few years, though, but it is a major key issue. Lots of people want this in their collection. It's X Factor number six, the first full appearance of Apocalypse, who had a cameo in issue number five. There are two copies graded 9.9. .9. And look at this. It's gone crazy. Over 5,000 copies graded by CGC, including 2,400 9.6s or better. Heritage is sold 71. A major key book. Everybody wants it. It's not rare. It was a big seller at the time, but it's just an iconic key book now. The biggest book of the year in Overstreet. It's been stalled for the last six years in all grades combined. But again, go check out uh, CGC sales for the 9.8s. On the census, there are over a thousand 9.8s graded, the two 9.9s, and there are five 9.8s of the Canadian price variant. So there you go. There's the top 10. Now let's compare them on the CGC census. By far, X Factor number six has the most copies graded with over 5,300 copies. After that, the next closest book is Uncanny X-Men 201 with 1,500 copies and New Mutants Annual number two also at 1,500 copies. At the other end of the spectrum, the two rare books, Marvel Super Special 40, The Magazine of Labyrinth, 20 copies graded, that's it. And Ewoks number 10, only 34 copies graded. Now it's interesting that uh, Captain America Annual number eight and Star Wars 107 and X Factor 6 are the three books that actually have 9.9s on this list. And after that, of course, which is the most common? Well, by far it's the X Factor number six. There's so many high grade copies graded. If we don't count the two uh, unusual non-superhero rare books, then the rarest book on the list, well, even Marvel Age 41, we could say sort of a little oddball. It's not really a mainstream superhero title at 451 copies. So if we don't count that one, then it actually is Masters of the Universe with less than a thousand copies graded. So there you go. The top 10 most valuable and important Marvel comics of the year. We do this every week. Please subscribe to this channel and I thank you for watching.